guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome I'm so happy you found us if you keep coming back you know you're so special you have my heart we are 64 away from a thousand and believe me a thousand's not our end goal we're just getting to a thousand and then we're gonna get to two thousand three thousand four thousand five thousand hopefully like that maybe anyway we're only 64 away from a thousand and it is February 24th. We have five days, because it's sleep year, to get to 1,000 before the end of February. That would be amazing to kick off March, which is my birth month, with 1,000 subscribers. If not, though, you know what? We'll roll with it. So today is all about magazine. Magazine images, magazine pages, and all the magic we can use to turn them into really cool things. So with, without any further talking on my part, let's get over to our video. All right, guys. So what do I have down here and what the heck are we doing with magazines? Well, I'm going to show you. This is a magazine, a Cosmopolitan, from 1986. And I love vintage magazines. One, you can get them extremely cheap or free, depending on where you find them. I like this one because of the fashion, so I don't cut this one up. But what I do is, if I find an image in one that I don't want to cut up because I like, for whatever reason, I'll scan it into my computer. And this one has several images that I've scanned in, and they're saved on my computer. So if I get ready to use them in a future time, I will have them, and I'll be able to resize them according to whatever I'm going to use them for. And I was going to show you an example. Let's see. This clock. I love this clock. I just like the look for a winter journal or maybe a recipe for ice cream. This would come in really handy. So I would scan it in and then I could print it whenever I wanted. But if this was a magazine that I wasn't saving the whole magazine intact, I would cut this out. In fact, that's what I do. I find images that I like, even cartoon images, girl boss there. I would cut her out, and then after I cut them out, I end up with a stack like this. And some of these are actually whole pages that I just like the look of the page, but I didn't want to store a whole page, so I cut the page, pulled the page out, and cut it in half. And so I have a lot of half pages. I like the pattern. I look for pattern. I look for colors. I look for textures. Food gives you a lot of texture. This is an image. I like the image. Animals, I always. Another, you know, who knows when you might need a box or cooking or a dog or a flower. So you get the idea. I'll cut out cartoon, real, whatever. I like the heart. And I end up with a stack like this. This is like undersea. And I just thought it was cool. Something else I like to do is I like to go through magazines and see if I can find any images that are like a full, a full person. And this one has some. I love 80s clothes too, guys. So this image, what I would do is I would cut her out, scan her into my computer, size her down just a little bit, and use her as a paper doll. Her the same way. A lot of times you can find great paper doll images in magazines. And the fun thing about using magazines for your paper dolls is you can find any decade. If you can find an old magazine, you're going to find an image. It may not be a full body image, but maybe it'll be a waste image. You could still use that in a journal. Here's one, black and white. I just love it. And you can find, like I said, any decade. All you have to do is go find any type of fashion, magazines, Woman's Day, anything like that. And you'll be able to find paper dolls. 
and I scan them in. That way I can always adjust them. A lot of times I'll use just the whole doll. I'll reprint her just a tad smaller than she was in the magazine. I'll cut it out and use that in a journal. Something else I always like to do. Guys, future editing Lisa here. She is not a paper doll from a magazine. She is actually from a envelope that holds vintage patterns, but you could use, but the magazine image would work exactly the same way as this one did. Just wanted to clarify. It shrink them down a whole lot, and then I could create my own postcards, my own photographs. And I made a video about this, which I will put the card above, and you can click on it. But you get really cool images. You could even take a photo of yourself scan it in, resize it, and put yourself in really cool locations. Or make yourself a paper doll for a journal. It's just fun, especially if you're doing like a fitness journal for yourself, a health journal, or just a memory keeping journal, making, you know, life size, making paper dolls of yourself and your family is fun and your pets. Okay, so I end up with a whole bunch of this because I don't keep many whole magazines. I think I have a few from the 80s and that's it. That's as far as my whole magazine stash goes. But I have a lot of magazine stuff that looks like this. Just pieces of paper, uh, half pages of pages, half pages of pages images, graphics, that sort of thing. So what do I do with all this? Well, it depends on the image, honestly. I can do quite a bit. One, you can make magazine envelopes with a whole page or a half page. This is from a whole page, it's kind of large, so if you wanted one that's a really good size, you could make one from a half page. And you would just fold it, sew it, tape it, glue it, fold it down, and boom. You would have your own envelope. The stitching obviously gives it more interest and just makes it look nicer. But totally up to you. Remember, everybody's their own person and what you like is different. You could also make like specimen cards if you had an image of an animal. Here, where did my polar bear go? Anyway, I had a polar bear a few minutes ago. Let's use, let's use the dog. You could put his face in here and make a specimen card and write the facts about the dog. This looks like a chocolate doodle of some sort. So you would write, you know, chocolate lab -a doodle and write, his name or whatever, you know, if it's your dog. You could put a bee if you wanted to. You could put a flower and tell what it is. You know, a specimen card. This one is strawberries though. I'm always finding recipes with their picture in magazines. So you could cut out the food recipe, put it in here, put the name of the recipe, where you found it, maybe what magazine, Write the recipe on the back, and then when you make it, you could, you know, made it first time, this date, it was okay, good, who was there with you, whatever. You could record, but putting a recipe you haven't tried yet with a picture is genius because if you just write the recipe down and you don't save the magazine image of it, you might be wondering, did yours turn out right? Plus, this is a great way to build up a library of recipes you might want to try in the future. Then you could always add your picture of your dish that you make next to the magazine image and, you know, make it a whole little cute thing. Those also make great Christmas gifts. I know, I know, Mother's Day gifts, Easter, whatever, birthday gifts for people that like to cook and try new things. Get a cooking magazine, cut the images out, make your window, put all the information, write the recipe on the back, and then give it in a cute little flip book if you wanted. You could poke holes in the ends. You could make a paper tab here and put them into a cute little journal. Great gift idea there, guys.
So that's just one way you could use magazines and magazine images. Another way is to pair them with something of complementary colors. Like I did this image, I glued it onto a paint chip and it's the same blues. I made sure they matched. And what I would use this for, well, I think it would be a cute little stamp. I would cover it with my packing tape or if I had some really good clear packaging, I could cover it with that. And it could be a stamp. If I have the packaging on it too, what I can do is, or the tape, whichever one. So say you're going to put it in clear packaging or you're going to put tape, whatever, and you want to use it as a stamp. Well, stamps, you know, have those marks like after they're um, mailed. You could put it in your clear packaging, trim it to match, all of that fun stuff. And then you know how paint, ha uh, mail that's been through the system has like that circle on top. You could put a date like 24 Feb 2024. Then you could put those lines through it and make it look like it's been sent. And that's just trimming it down to fit the stamp, but you get the idea. And this is just a simple um, black paint marker, extra fine point. I kind of really like it. It's an acrylic pen, water-based acrylic ink. So, and but you can make a stamp. Now, remember, this would all be gone, and it would be cut to fit your stamp. But you can make stamps out of magazine images. The same way you made the recipe card, you could find a bunch of florals you like, get the information how to plant them, or just put the image on a card and make the, this is what I'm gonna plant in my garden this spring. You could do it with vegetables, whatever. I'm getting ready to make a vintage sewing journal and I saw this image. I thought it would be super cute as a tab for embroidery. You could also get use other um, images for tabs depending on what your journal is about. Of course, you can always use them for decor on tags, belly bands, pockets, you know. You can use just parts off a magazine page as washi tape. I saw this one. It's a pretty kind of different yellow color. I put my double-sided tape on the back, and when I need a little piece of yellow washi, I'll have it right there, ready to go. Now, I love this image. It's just a field of purple flowers. And what you could do with this is either tape it over a ticket and make a whole, you know, row of tickets that look like your purple flowers. This was actually scanned into my computer and I printed it on that clear overhead sheet paper. What's it called? Let's see here. Oh, transparency film for laser but printers, but you can find it for ink jets too. And believe it or not, it's not very expensive. It's easy to print on. And that's what I printed this on, so it's kind of shiny. And it just makes a really cool ticket, and I would do it all the way down and then have either individual tickets that I could write on the back. Of course, they could decorate things, whatever. It could be a belly band, or it could be on the side of my journal page as a border. These little guys, I cut them out because I thought they were adorable. And if you're making a journal, a fitness journal, health journal for yourself or, you know, for whatever, for yourself, you could put these guys on the page and have quotes coming out of their mouth like they're your little coaches. They could be tabs on your page or for a um, section. 
you could put something like the shrimp. You could trim this down to fit your journal and make a dashboard. Like you have dashboards and planners that are basically just stiff pictures separating different parts of the planner. Well, you could make a dashboard. A dashboard. And if you have a, a fitness journal, of course you need a food section. Trust me, don't deny yourself. So you could use this as a dashboard. You could use any of these for a dashboard or you could use images off of one and make your own dashboard. Of course, you can use these to layer on mixed media pieces. It would add texture and it would add some color. So it's always fun to use magazine images that way. Now, this is a teacup, and I cut a slit, well, it tore, but anyway, and I put that in there because that, to me, is like aromatics, right? Because your tea should smell good, if you ask me. What could you use this for? I thought about it, and I like to use magazine images for different things. So you could take this, tape it or glue it all together. And what I'm gonna do is just put a little piece of scotch tape on the back because I just wanna show you. Of course, you would wanna glue it with something besides scotch tape or hide the back, you know if you were using this in a journal, but I'm gonna do this for now. I'll cover it up with a piece of paper later. Okay, now it's all secure, and I'm gonna take a little bit of, so you'd want some kitchen twine, and you would attach your twine to your tea bag and attach your cup to the other end of your tea, twine. So you would make a custom tea bag. If it's for a journal and nobody's actually going to use your tea, you could even attach the cup right to the tea like that. And it just gives a cute little ephemera piece in your journal. So I have my double-sided tape. I would just plop it on the back here. If you're gonna use your tea bag, again, you'd want some kitchen twine. It's unbleached, you know, no chemicals on it. And you could just use this as the end of your, as your tea bag thing that you do that with. So, oh, there's my polar bear. Thank you. This one's definitely gonna be a stamp. I think it screams stamp. Here's something else you can do with magazine images. And if you find any art or, you know, ad, whatever, that has a lot of images on it, you could make it a type of grocery list. And all you would do is put something on the back and then, you know, you could put a cute little sticker or words that says grocery list on there. So use the graphics that are in your magazine. Let the graphics or the pictures or the words tell you what you could use it for because there again, use words from the magazine. Don't just use the photos, use the words. And if they're a little big, scan them in. But instead of paying for a book of sayings, scan in a bunch of words or cut out a bunch of words and then you could put them all together says the cool cook. That would be really cute on the journal that you're making with the little window recipes. Great gift. So look your magazines over and cut out all the cool words. One of the last things you can do with magazine images is to create art like this. This has won multiple awards and it's just magazine pages cut in strips and rolled. That's all it is. 
And lastly, we're actually going to create something very useful with a magazine half page and a lot of the images I have already cut out. But why do I pick what I pick? Why do I choose what I have in this pile? Why? Well, I'm going to put all of them back over here too because they're all pertinent to why. And one reason I think they're cute. Or I see that it could be a piece of washi. This definitely going in an upcoming journal. So whatever I have going on. And if you'll notice, I always have a ton of florals. I love flowers. And I will cut out every floral image I can find. If it's in good shape, if it's a pretty color, like the purple flowers I had cut out this pink flower, this one I cut, kept because of the purple flowers. Outside nature, I love outside, I love nature. The flowers and the weathered bench. Anything that's natural, I like the juxtaposition of the flowers with the modern cut of the perfume bottles. Okay, this one's totally because of the avocados. Again, flowers. So that's what I look for. Stuff I love. Colors that pop. This is really pretty. It really pops. If I have a need coming up. Or if I see something that triggers an idea. Like my recipe journal. But, not recipes I've used or cooked, but ones that I might make in the future. This is not only a great gift for a friend, but it's a gift for myself as well. You know, stuff that triggers, like, this would look great. I love the colors on this chair. It could be great for a home decor journal or a journaling card in anything. So, I look for, one, what I've got going on. Two, colors and textures. And three, something that gets a response from me emotionally. That's what I choose. That's how all of these ended up cut out in, in my blue folder. Because where do I store them? In my blue pocket folder. Okay. Last thing, let's make something... Kind of big, and we're going to use some of this other stuff as well. And I'm going to use this half sheet, and I'm going to get all this out of the way, so hang on. Okay, this half sheet, oops, let's save that, is about 11, just short of 11 by four and a half. So it's 11 by four and a half. And one thing I like to do with magazine images is make pockets. So I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm doing it super simple, just Folding it in half and I'm going to cut it apart. I'm going to cut it apart. Okay, I'm going to cut it apart. Okay, guys, once you cut your page in half, you're going to take one side at a time, and you're going to decide what's the bottom and what's the top. And first, on the side, you're going to come in a quarter of an inch and crease. Okay. And then when you decide which is the bottom and which is the top, I'm going to go with this is the bottom. 
then you're going to bring the bottom up a quarter of an inch like that okay and you're going to crease it all down so if your magazine pages are thick Get out your bone folder and just smooth them down. And then do the same thing with the other side. And the mango, I'm gonna make this the bottom. But first, I'm gonna come in a quarter of an inch on each side. And you can be precise and measure or you don't. Remember, be you, do you. And everybody's different. Otherwise, the world would be really boring. Okay, and then the bottom, fold it up a quarter of an inch. And then come in with your little bone folders if you want. And just fold everything nice and down. Creased. And then bring your other side over. Marry up each end and bottom. And then glue it or tape it and you just put glue on your little flaps you made and i tell y'all i just got a whole new package order of double-sided tape in and the last time i ordered it was last february so the package comes i'm gonna show y'all again it comes with is this it? i think so yeah it comes with all these rolls, all these different sizes. I mean, this is a lot of tape. And it just lasts. I love it. I haven't ordered any more since last February. And it lasts. And I use it all the time. Okay. Now, if you notice, my bottom is folded on top of my side fold. See that? See what I'm talking about? So I'm going to open the bottom up a bit and put the tape on my side folds first because the bottom actually has to be taped to the side fold. Oh, guys, have y'all watched Barbie, the movie Barbie? I watched it because, you know, I had Barbies as a kid and I'd heard good things about the movie and oh my gosh, it really is good, y'all. I don't see how it's for kids, though, because it's talking about modern grown, grown issues, you know, and um, I think if you haven't seen it, don't blow it off because you think it's a kid's movie. It's not. Okay, before I pull the tape up and glue the bottom to the two sides, I'm going to put my tape across the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and do all the taping on this side as well. And if you'll notice, I didn't go all the way to the top on my taping. I did about half an inch from the top. And I probably didn't do quite that here. So let me. Because you want to make, I'll show you. Just don't go all the way to the top. And I can't get it up, but that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'll just fold it over on itself. Because you can do that with this. I do want it to go all the way to the fold at the bottom, though. Okay, there we go. Well, I didn't go far enough on that side. Dang. Okay, let's put this. Nope, it needs to come up a bit. Okay, we'll go with that. And then I'm going to put the last piece across the bottom down here. And really, you only have to do one side, but you do have to put the little pieces down here so the bottom, bottom fold sticks. So what I'm going to do is peel off the sides. Okay. Come on. 
Come on. Yeah. So you can find magazines at thrift stores. You can find magazines at used bookstores. Okay, what I'm going to do now is fold the bottom down, except I'm sticking. Now, this tape is very sticky, so just watch it. I'm just going to push it down on the sides itself, and that's it. Remember, you still have open tape on the other part, so I'm going to pull off the bottom paper and put it up here. Now, I'm going to do the sides first over here because I'm, I'm putting this flap down first. Anyway, you can find tape at used bookstores, thrift stores, estate, not tape. You can find magazines at used bookstores, thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales. Sometimes you can just throw them. People will have them out in their trash. And it's okay to take them. Okay, now. I'm just going to make sure everything kind of marries up as well as possible. So I start with the bottom. And if it gets off, it's fine. Okay, don't sweat it. Okay, but once you get it all together as good as you can, like I said, don't sweat if it's off a little bit you'll have a pocket like that. Pretty cool, right? Now, we're not done. What you need to do now is get your, if you have a circle punch, get your circle punch. I do have a circle punch right here. This is my small one inch circle punch I've had forever. If it's still available, I'll link it below for you guys. And I'm just going to do a half circle. So you can see the paper in there. I'm just going to go halfway, try to be in the center if I can. And make that. And then I have this little moon thing in the front, just like that. Now. Yes, we've made a pocket. Okay. Woohoo. Now what? Well, I'm going to show you now what. Now I'm going to take some of my images. Okay. I'm going to take some of my images and the word. And I'm going to put them in my pocket. Okay. I want this one. To have like a tab. Well, what can I use for a tab? I'm going to use my homemade washi tape. So I'm going to peel it off like that. And put it like this. But you can use ribbon if you want. You can use whatever you have. I'm just trying to show you that you can do this from start to finish all with magazine images magazines all right this guy i'm gonna trim down just a little bit okay then i'm gonna get out my trusty corner rounder which i don't know how many of you remember creative memories i got roped into it and yes roped and i'm around all the edges and this is going to be like my tag okay then i'm gonna get my hole punch and punch a hole and then that would go in and i'm gonna put it behind my washi tape one like that there we go now, other things I might want to put in here, of course, are my tickets. And I'm going to put that one where the image was not glued down so I can do that. So you can make a secret writing place underneath and write a message and see how it's the clear transparency. And I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to let that transparency 
not being attached to that ticket act as like a little hook on there. And then I could make a little envelope with another page. So I'm gonna cut this page in half. And of course, if you wanna make sure all your pages are, you know, squared off, that's great too. And then I'm just gonna fold it up like this. It's gonna be a small envelope. Fold that over and you could stitch it, you can glue it, whatever you wanna do do for some fancy stitches in it. I'm gonna go stitch it really fast, nothing fancy. So there's my little envelope all stitched up. And what I'm gonna put in there is some more things that I might wanna use for a journal. So I'm gonna put my two little coach guys in there. I'm gonna put my words. And Maybe my sewing, I'm gonna close that like that. And I'm gonna stick it in here as well. And there you go. And I could decorate the outside if I wanted to or not, whatever you wanna do. But that's how you can use magazine images to create a whole nice little pocket full of multiple items all made from magazine. And guys, don't forget art made from magazines as well. Also, I said there was a plus that's because you can take magazine pages, sew them all together, glue them all together, whatever you want to do, and laminate them and make really cool, unique, and individualized placemats for an island, for your table, for anywhere. Also, you can take a whole page, roll it into a long roll, kind of wind them together in the circular motion and you'll have a bowl and the last idea but certainly not the least is you could take those same paper roll and curl them up and hook them all together for unique window coverings magazines aren't just for reading anymore So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button with that little bell because I have a lot of great ideas coming your way this year and you don't want to miss out. So when you hit subscribe and that little bell, when you click the little bell, select all. That way you'll just know when more videos post. Thank you as usual for being here. It just means a lot that you guys keep coming back and you keep watching. Take care. Have an amazing rest of your weekend. I will see you Monday, Tuesday with our next video. Bye-bye, guys.